This is the sixth video on Introduction to Feedback. In this particular video, we're going to give some fairly prescriptive rules for quantifying the impact of proportional feedback on first order models. Now first, the background and assumptions. The previous video used several examples to illustrate that with proportional design, you get changes in time constant and steady state. This video is going to generalize it. Um, in other words, we'll give a generic first order model and show precisely what this impact is. We're going to assume that students are familiar with concepts of time constant and system gain, and you're advised to look at the performance of videos on analysis of performance, which discuss offset and gain in detail, if you're a bit unsure about that. You'll also find time constant covered in videos on first order responses. A reminder then of the context. We're looking at feedback systems. So that's this block on the right hand side. And what we're saying is that if you put a system G of S into a feedback loop with a compensator M of S, then the performance you expect or the behavioral relationship between Y and R is very different from what you would get if you were in open loop. And in particular, we're interested in exactly how does this closed loop transfer function relationship change as you change M, where here M is going to be restricted to proportional uh, compensators. Here's the system then. So we've got a simple feedback loop that's given here with an M of S and a G of S. But what we're doing is we're restricting M of S just to be a constant K. And this video is focused on first order systems. So a generic model for a first order system is given here. G of S equals A over TS plus 1. So the first thing we need to do is find out what's the closed loop relationship between the target R and the output Y. So there's the relationship. You get the closed loop transfer function is given as GK over 1 plus GK. And if I substitute in the numbers I've got here, this is what I get. KA over TS plus 1 plus KA. Now, if I was to put this in time constant form, just so people can see, because it's the space to do it here, I can rewrite the numerator as Ka over 1 plus Ka, and rewrite the denominator as T over 1 plus Ka into S plus 1. So you'll notice what I've done there. I've divided the numerator and the denominator by 1 plus Ka to put it into what you might call a more standard time constant form. So now what we've got, I could call this, for example, alpha over tor s plus 1. So the closed loop system has got a gain alpha and a time constant tor. And clearly this term on top is alpha. And this term down here is tor. So we can see a strong relationship between the open loop gain, which is capital A, and the closed loop gain, Ka over 1 plus K, and the open loop time constant, capital T, and the closed loop time constant, tor. So this page summarizes what we've got. You'll see we've got the open loop transfer function. Here it is, A over TS plus 1, and the closed loop transfer function, Ka over TS plus 1 plus P Ka. But more specifically, we want the reader to notice the changes in gain. So there's the two expressions there. The open loop gain, capital A. The closed loop gain, K, capital A, over 1 plus K, capital A. And the open loop time constant, T. And the closed loop time constant, T, over 1 plus Ka. So this video is going to look at those relationships and see how to the closed loop gain and the closed loop time constant depend on this proportional gain, K. First example then, what's the effect of changes in k on the closed loop gain? So here's the expression we're talking about. The closed loop gain is ka over 1 plus ka. Now, for convenience, because it really isn't going to change the essence of the argument, we're going to assume a equals 1, and we're going to vary capital K. So you'll notice down here, the horizontal axis is capital K. Up here, the vertical, ax vertical axis is the closed loop gain. And what do you notice? If k equals 0, the closed loop gain equals 0. As k increases, the closed loop gain increases. But, and here's the key point, 
the closed loop game never quite gets to 1. And hopefully that's obvious. You've got Ka over 1 plus Ka. The numerator is always 1 smaller than the denominator. So you'll never quite get to 1. But as k goes to infinity, the closed loop gain tends to 1. So you can see an increasing gain with increasing, increasing closed loop gain with increasing proportional gain k, but never quite getting to 1. What about the effect of changes in the proportional gain on the time constant? Well, this is the formula we had. The closed loop time constant is capital T over 1 plus ka. So again, I'm going to use the same simplification I used before. I'm going to set a equal to 1. And I'm also, for normalization terms, going to say that the open loop t is 1. Again, I could use another t, but it doesn't really change things. What happens now as I increase k? Well, you see, k equals 0. What do I get? I get t equals 1, or basically the open loop time constant. As capital K increases, my time constant reduces. In other words, as K goes up, T gets faster. So as you increase the proportional gain, then the closed loop system gets a faster and faster time constant. And you can see that for very large K, the time constant will tend to zero. All right, then, what about the effect of changes in the proportional gain on the initial input? Now, in terms of my diagram, the input is this signal in here. It's what comes out of the compensator and goes into the process. And I might be particularly interested in that value because it tells me about my actuation. Now, for convenience, again, I'm assuming A equals 1, T equals 1, and R equals 1, because that doesn't really affect the... Um, observation. You can put different numbers if you like, but you'll get the same basic insight. The key point is that u of 0 is essentially equal to k. In fact, it's kr, but we'll just use k. So as k increases, you'll notice u of 0 increases. So the actuation required grows in proportion to the proportional gain, and that can be a problem because in general, the actuation available is limited. A valve can only go 0 to 100%. A steering wheel can only go so far. An accelerator pedal can only go as far as the floor. So what you see is the proportional compensation assumes you can get whatever input you like. And in practice, maybe you can't. So an example to show what we've illustrated in the previous graphs. I've got an open loop transfer function here, 0.5 over s plus 2, and I've put the uh, proportional compensator into the numerator. I've now calculated the closed loop transfer function. There it is, 0.5k over s plus 2 plus 0.5k. And now I'm going to calculate the closed loop steady state gain and the closed loop time constant for different values of proportional. So k equals 0, gain equals 0, time constant half. k equals 1, gain 0.2 time constant 0.4. k equals 2, gain a third, time constant 0.33. k equals 5, gain 5 ninths, time constant 2 ninths. So what do you notice? As k increases, the steady state gain increases gradually and the time constant gets faster. If we look at the plot, what do we notice? The blue plot is the slowest because that's the one that's got k equals 1 and the red plot with k equals 5 is the fastest. If you look at the implicit time constant, you'll see the blue is not really settling until you get around here, whereas the red is settling over here. It's settling faster. You can see the time constant is speeding up. You also see the steady state gain is increasing because the red one settles all the way up here at roughly 0.55, where the blue one settles down here at 0.2. So, if you increase the proportional gain, you increase the speed of response and the steady state gain, and you can write down an explicit formula to show these relationships. Now, what about the initial input? Because actuation is quite important. If you look at this fast response, this red one here, then you notice the initial input was all the way up here 
at 5 because k was 5. However, if you look at the slow response down here, which went to a much slower, uh, lower steady state gain and responded more slowly, but the initial input was down here, it was only 1. So nothing is for free. You get this faster response and this better steady state by having more actuation, by actually driving the input harder. So here's an example just to go through slowly and see what we've got. So we've got G equals 4 over S plus 10. And I'm going to put a compensator K in there. And now I'm going to calculate the closed loop transfer function. So GC is going to be 4 K over S plus 10 plus K. And so now I can see that the steady state gain is going to be 4k over 10. Oh, I missed a 4 somewhere there, sorry. There's a 4k there. Over 10 plus 4k. And the steady state time constant is going to be 1 over 10 plus 4k. So now I can put in the numbers. If k equals 0, the gain is 0, the time constant is 1 over 10. If k equals 1, then the gain is going to be 4 over 14, and the time constant is going to be 1 over 14. If k equals 2, the gain is going to be 8 over 18, and the time constant is going to be 1 over 18. If k equals 5, then the gain is going to be 20 over 30, and the time constant is going to be 1 over 30. So again, you notice the same pattern. The gain increases as you increase the proportional gain, and the time constant gets faster as you increase the proportional gain. And of course, we've noted up here that the initial value of the input is the same as the proportional gain. So as you increase capital K, you get a bigger U of 0. So things you might want to think about when doing a design. What time constant is desirable for this system? What closed loop gain is desirable? And do you need zero steady state offset, which none of these have given? How much actuator energy is available? Because we've shown that U of zero is linked to this proportional compensation K. How would your design be affected by parameter uncertainty? That's actually covered in other videos. But we note here, there is no single correct answer. The purpose of this video is to give you some insight so you can see how the time constant and the steady state gain depend on your choices so that you've got the tools to make the choice you want. So some conclusions. It's noted that for first order systems, the closed loop gain and time constant and the maximum input have a simple link to the proportional compensator gain K. The time constant is given by T over 1 plus Ka, so it gets smaller as capital K increases and approaches zero for large K. The response gets faster. The closed loop steady state gain is Ka over 1 plus Ka, so it approaches unity as capital K increases, but it's not close to 1 in general for normal choices of K. And the initial input U of 0 is given by the K, and thus in practice K may be limited by the available actuation. Now, the key point you will have also noticed here is with a simple first order system and a proportional control law, you will always get closed loop offset. And therefore, just proportional control is unlikely to be used in most scenarios. But remember, these videos are about explaining concepts, illustrate what's going on, and eventually we'll move to this is how you will do a good design.